We finally have a trailer for The Secrets of Dumbledore. I wanted to make a video and really dive into everything we see. I'm going to go over both the teaser we got on Friday and the trailer we got on Monday. And using all my Potter knowledge, I'll point out easter eggs, predictions, and theories. Obviously, most of this is not confirmed. This is just me speculating as best I can. But anyway, we've waited so long for this trailer, so I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Let's get into it. The trailer starts off with some shots of Hogwarts, which were angles we've never seen before, so that's cool. And we see a golden snitch flying. Now, going to the teaser, this snitch was seen in the shot with Dumbledore, so it's clearly important to him, and he might have hidden something in it, much like the Resurrection Stone in the Deathly Hallows. We then hear Dumbledore say, The past whispers to you. The past he's referring to was of course from his younger days when he met Grindelwald, made the blood pact with him, and his sister Ariana died, possibly by his own hand and because of his actions with Grindelwald. We then see Newt and Theseus go into Hogsmeade Village, which we saw a ton of in the original series. They go to the Hogshead, the pub that Dumbledore's brother Aberforth owns. This was of course where the first DA meeting happened, and where the trio entered Hogwarts before the final battle. We then get our first look at young Aberforth, which is awesome. That would be my brother. The way he speaks of Albus, it's clear he still holds a lot of resentment toward his brother, especially because he blamed Albus for Ariana's death. At their sister's funeral, Aberforth punched Albus in the face and broke his nose, so clearly there's some bad blood there. The next shot shows Dumbledore walking through a village, and looking at the signs, they're all in English, so he is not in Brazil where most of the movie is confirmed to take place. We then hear a voiceover where Dumbledore says, The world as we know it is coming undone. Grindelwald is pulling it apart with hate. Probably referring to Grindelwald's rampage taking over the world as his armies were getting bigger and stronger. In the next shot, we see a big crowd at a rally, and looking at the sign, it says Supreme Boss in Portuguese, which is the language most in Brazil speak, and that makes sense because, as I said, the confirmed location for this film is Brazil. This might be a rally for Grindelwald, and he's the Supreme Boss the flag is referring to. We then see Grindelwald pulling a memory out of Yusuf Kama's head, who of course played a very large role in the last movie. Taking a memory out of someone's head is something we saw a lot in the original series, and Grindelwald might be using Kama's memory to his advantage somehow. We then have some dialogue where Dumbledore asks Theseus to trust him. You have to trust me. And he could be saying this because Theseus put trust in Dumbledore in the last movie. Have you ever trusted me? Theseus! And that led to Leta's death, the woman Theseus loved. So Dumbledore might be trying to gain that trust from Theseus back. We also see Newt standing in the background. And if I'm right, and what he's saying is about Leta, those words could impact Newt as well, because he too loved Leta in the past. We then see Newt and the bow truckle Pickett pulling up from the water to a piece of land. And it sounds like Pickett says, look at that. So they might have just found a huge creature, because when looking at the teaser from Friday, we see Newt running through these woods as he's getting blasted, most likely from the beast Pickett said to look at. In that shot, we also see Newt holding what could be a moon calf, which we saw in the first Fantastic Beast film. We then see Newt and the gang going through a brick wall, and they arrive at what looks like the Brazilian wizarding school Castela Bruxu. This is especially clear with the stairs, which defines the school and the art from Pottermore. After that, we hear Theseus say that Newt's assistant is on the team for this mission, and that's of course Bunty, the person who took care of Newt's creatures while he was gone in the last movie, so it looks like she's getting a bigger role this time around. We then get another shot of a building in the mountains, and my best guess is this is the other side of Castella Bruxu on the opposite side of the stairs. We then get a shot of more people rallying, and if you look closely, this sign right here is the same sign that said Supreme Boss in Portuguese, so this is the same crowd from before, but this time on the move. The next shot shows Eulali Hicks, who Theseus describes as a school teacher. A school teacher? Now, Eulali Hicks was in The Crimes of Grindelwald very briefly, but the film never told us who she was. However, the screenplay did. The screenplay says she's a young American professor at Ilvermorny, the American Wizarding School, so it looks like she's joining the action with Newt in the gang. We then see this team of heroes on the train, which I don't think is the Hogwarts Express, as that train is red and this one is more blue and gray. While on the train, we see something huge, as Newt gives Jacob a wand courtesy of Dumbledore. Dumbledore asked that I give you something. Are you kidding me right now? 
So this raises the question, is Jacob more than just a muggle? He might in fact have a magical ancestor that we didn't know about. We then cut back to Hogwarts and see a Gryffindor Quidditch player flying over the courtyard, and it looks like he bears the number 9. The number 9 doesn't mean much, but I just thought I'd point it out, because maybe it will be important later. Also, he could be chasing the snitch that we saw in the very beginning of the trailer. We then see a shot of Newt, Theseus, Jacob, and Hicks walking through Hogwarts, and in the next shot, they're in the Great Hall. We see Dumbledore using his wand to make a giant mass, which if you look at it from this view, it looks like he's creating an image of Castello Bruchu, showing them where they were going. Also, if you zoom in and flip the screen, it looks like Newt is holding a newspaper that says, Murdered Muggles, probably referring to Grindelwald's rampage. Next, we get a really interesting glimpse of Aberforth and Albus interacting in the hog's head, and as Albus is leaving, Aberforth says in a very sarcastic voice, I'll have to save the world, Owen. Again, showing that he blames his older brother for their sister's death. We then get another shot of the crowd in Brazil, and they're shooting off fireworks for the rally. The next shot is really interesting, because we see Credence below a phoenix flying over him, which brings us back to the last scene of The Crimes of Grindelwald, where the phoenix presented itself to him, making Grindelwald say that Credence is a Dumbledore. And notice how long Credence's hair is. This could mean a good amount of time has passed since the last movie. We do not know the date in which this film takes place, but considering that we started in the 1920s, and this series is most likely going to end with Dumbledore and Grindelwald's duel in 1945, there could be a significant time jump from the second movie to the third movie. We then see a shot of Jacob and Queenie hugging, and this is also interesting because they're in Jacob's bakery, and they're wearing the same clothes that they had on in the final scene of the first movie. So this might be a flashback, and we get to see the rest of the scene that was cut short with the cliffhanger. And I know they said Jacob kept his memories because he only had good ones. But you said it. The potion only erases bad memories. I didn't have any. But now with the wand, maybe he kept his memories because he's not a fully fledged muggle as we originally thought. He might have some wizards or witches in his family line. The next shot shows Dumbledore holding the blood pack that he and Grindelwald made. And looking closely, there's someone behind him that almost looks like Mads, the new actor for Grindelwald. However, I don't think that's who it is because I would imagine they wouldn't face each other until their 1945 duel. So it could just be Newt or Theseus or someone else. We then see Newt and Theseus in a cave, which if I had to guess was maybe part of the mountains surrounding the Brazilian wizarding school. We also get to see some new creatures here, and we see Newt doing Newt things, knowing how to work with and control the creatures. Then we see the two brothers being attacked by a much larger creature, and we saw a few shots of this in the teaser from Friday as well. Just taking a guess from the glowing body, the horn on its head, and the scorpion-like tail, this could be a giant blast-ended screwed, a creature that we know all too well from the original series. However, it's much bigger and has multiple scorpion tails rather than just one, so it might not be that and could be a new creature altogether. We then see a shot of Hicks and Theseus being surrounded, and looking at the background of this, this looks like the same place where Dumbledore was when he had the snitch in the teaser. Hicks and Theseus begin to duel four people, three of them dressed a lot like Dumbledore, but doing a side-by-side -side comparison, the colors of their coats don't match Dumbledore, so I don't think that he's part of this. Also, looking closer, we can see some creatures here, and they are creatures called Dury Crawls, which we saw in the first movie, and they have the ability to disapparate and reappear somewhere else to get out of danger, which if you look closely, is exactly what they're doing here. The next shot shows Jacob trying to fight the wind that's blowing all the dishes around him, and we saw a similar shot to this in the teaser. Originally, I thought Jacob was the one doing this with magic, but here we see it's actually Queenie doing it. Jacob and Queenie, of course, did not end on the best of terms, as she left him and joined Grindelwald, and I'm still convinced that Grindelwald put her under the Imperius Curse, because he met her right before the final battle, so I don't think Queenie is in control when she's going after Jacob here. We then see a shot of Credence around where we saw him with the Phoenix, and he's joined by Vinda Rosier, the woman loyal to Grindelwald from the previous film, and there's also another woman there, maybe another one of Grindelwald's loyal followers who we haven't met yet, because I don't recognize her. Credence is cutting through through what looks like a magical protection, because if we go back to the Deathly Hallows, the magical protection around the castle was blue, and then when Voldemort broke it open, it turned orange, which is exactly what it's doing here in this shot, so they might be trying to get to something that's magically guarded. The next shot shows Newt running up the steps of Castello Bruchu, chasing after who might be Tina. We saw another angle of this in the teaser, and if you look closely, there's a group of people waiting for them at the top, and going back to the trailer, the next shot shows Grindelwald up there. Both the teaser and this trailer give us our first look at Mads as Grindelwald, who of course replaced Johnny Depp. In this shot, Grindelwald says, Our war with the muckles begins! 
today! Which we of course heard a lot about in the original series, Grindelwald wanting to rule over muggles, and here in this movie seems to be when he starts that war against them. We then see a shot of Yusuf Kama at what I think is Castello Bruchu, and he takes down a bunch of people who are most likely Grindelwald's followers, which could mean there's going to be a big battle at this school, much like the Battle of Hogwarts. The next shot shows Grindelwald in a giant pool, which I'm assuming is a giant pensive similar to the one that we saw in Makusa in the first Fantastic Beasts film, and he's probably using this pensive to look at the memory that he got from Yusuf earlier in the trailer. He blasts a bunch of water at who I think is Credence judging by the long dark hair, and he disapparates then reappears right in front of Credence, and he begins to choke him as Rosier and another follower of Grindelwald watches. So Credence probably said something about leaving or not trusting Grindelwald anymore, which pissed him off, hence him slamming him on the wall. In the next scene, we see Credence running at Dumbledore, followed by a giant obscurial mass. The giant mass is similar to the one that he made in the last film when he lost control of his emotions, and here he looks pretty mad, so he's probably lost control of his emotions again, this time because of Dumbledore. This is an interesting meeting, because Credence thinks he's a Dumbledore, as that's what Grindelwald told him at the end of the last movie, so he might feel as though he was abandoned by the family, thus why he's going after Albus. We see the two push each other, and as they do, Dumbledore disapparates away, and if I had to guess, is most likely going to reappear somewhere near that area and the fight will resume. The next shot shows the Room of Requirement opening, and when I saw this room in the teaser on Friday, I suspected that's what this room was, because we had never seen anything like it in the castle before. This device in the middle of the room is most likely going to take them to the Brazilian Wizarding School, the room giving them an easy way to do so, which we've seen it do in the past, like creating the tunnel to the hog's head in the original series. Also, notice that each one of them has a suitcase. My guess is, each one houses something for that specific person, courtesy of Dumbledore, and it's something that will help them on their mission, much like when he left something for each person in the trio in his will, which also helped them on their mission. In the next shot, we see Newt being held up in the air and a suitcase dangling, by what I think is a new beast introduced just for this movie. We then see Pickett running for his life, possibly from the beast he and Newt saw in the woods earlier in the trailer. After that, we see Credence releasing his obscurial magic at Dumbledore, so this is probably connected to their fight from earlier. After that, we go back to the scene in the Great Hall, and Dumbledore gives three points to Hufflepuff. Correct. Three points to Hufflepuff. Meaning Newt answered that question, because that's of course his house. He's a Hufflepuff. After that, we see Jacob talking to some Hogwarts students about his wand. Also, the fact that Jacob has his wand at this point means this takes place after the train scene where Newt gave it to him. And just going over some scenes from the teaser that I did not mention already, we have a shot of Grindelwald celebrating with his hands up, and he's surrounded by who I believe to be his supporters celebrating with him, which could possibly go hand in hand with the rally we saw in Brazil. There was also a shot of Rosier that was in the teaser, but not in the trailer. And if you freeze frame this shot, you can see she's casting a green spell, which most of the time means the killing curse being cast. So she's aiming to kill. And there you go, a full breakdown of our first look at Fantastic Beasts 3. Let me know down below your thoughts on the trailer, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life, like my cute dog Loki, and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me, and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe, and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.